Undoubtedly, you guys have seen all of the snow we've gotten this week. We got over six feet. I wanted to focus on snow tonight because it's something that we all can kind of understand. You know, you've got, well, I can't really pick out one little flake from this, but you guys understand the concept. This right here is billions of little flakes. What you see outside is, oh, good grief, it's a whole lot more. This man Abram is very old. By the way, people lived a long time way back when. Um, Abram was old. God promises him, you know, you will have a son. You're going to have an heir, and through your son, through you, I'm going to make you the father of a great nation. People who will be mine. I'll be their God. They'll be my people. And initially, Abram and his wife weren't sure. Sarai actually laughed. She laughed at God. Keep that in mind. After 25 years, God finally fulfills his promise to Abram. And as part of this promise, he takes Abram up to a hill and has him look up into the sky at all the stars and to see that I'm going to give you this many descendants. As many stars as are in the sky. And God gives him a son. Name's Isaac. Which, by the way, means <coughs> laughter. The stars are uncountable. The snow that we gathered, that we've collected in Cory over the last few days, is honestly uncountable. We can measure how much has fallen in foot measurements, in meter measurements, if you really want to get out to it. We can weigh it. I've probably moved a very literal ton of snow out of my driveway when all was said and done, just because of the weight of it. But we can't count it. I can't take this apart into individual flakes anymore. And this is the promise that God made to Abraham. That he was going to make him the father of a nation with more, more people than there are snowflakes in this box. I was thinking about that promise God made while I was watching the snowfall. I'm just thinking about how, you know, one flake, big deal. A dozen flakes, you know, so what? You got millions of flakes collecting. It makes something pretty obvious. It covers everything. And I thought about the color white. And the fact that white is traditionally the purest of colors. Brides are supposed to wear white on their wedding day because they've saved themselves for their husband. It symbolizes they're pure for their husband. It, it doesn't hide anything. Unless you're a polar bear in a blizzard, then you can hide all you want. But the color white shows every imperfection, every impurity. If I had on a white shirt right now, you'd probably be able to find lint and dust because I'm walking around the world. Think about Christmas, and we always think about as Ricky Bobby would put it, little baby Jesus. We think about Jesus in a manger. We think about wise men and shepherds. But we don't think about the rest of his story, what he came to do. He came to make us like this. You see, every single person in this room, myself included, is dirty. Every one of us is dirty. In all honesty, we're pretty filthy compared to God. And yet, he offers to cover up our mess and to wash it away so that we're left as white as this, and even more so. And that's what he came for. And that's what I wanted to share with you guys tonight. That no matter, no matter what you've done, no matter who you may have been with, No matter where you've been in your life, nothing you can do can get you so dirty that he can't wash you clean. Nothing. There is no amount of dirt in the world that could cover you that would keep you from becoming clean like this snow.